in life. Terry, cherish the gospel of Christ. May now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. And also in baptism, Terry, receive the sign of the cross. May now share with him Christ's victory over sin and death. We may place the book of the Gospels on the cross to indicate his strong faith. Please be seated. I welcome you in this Sunday afternoon during this season of Easter to gather for the funeral rites of Terry Sexton. I welcome you as wife Bridge, children Wayne and Gary, daughter in law Natalie, a a grandchildren Ailish, Chloe, and Kyra, and James, John, and Joe, his brothers, and Margaret, and all of the family, relatives, and friends, and all of you who join us online at this time here in St. Patrick's in Carrie Callan. On behalf of myself and Father Andrew Tully, we offer our sympathy to you as a family who gather on this sad day for you as you reflect on a life that has been lived. We know that Christ has risen, and we ask that that same Christ who rose from the dead be with you now as a family, as you pray, as you remember and as you reflect. And so, as we do gather as our faith community, we begin our funeral mass with a blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our own faults and failings. As we say together, I confess. Almighty God you, my brothers and sisters, I greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, and let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Terry, also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now, forever and ever. I invite now uh, Carmel and Julia now to share the word of God with us at this time. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation. But they are at peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, Their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, 
great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them to be worthy with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us that has left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out a command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds, together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Explain the scriptures to us, make our hearts one within us as you talk to us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Damas, seven miles in Jerusalem. And they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Theophas answered him, you must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things, he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people. And how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened. And some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at the table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road, and explained the scriptures to us. They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Living in a country parish, you become aware of the beauty of nature all around us, especially at this time of year. I've noticed definitely the cherry blossoms are evident all around us in the springtime, despite the unpleasant weather that we have been experiencing. In a way, that gives us a sense of hope for a time to come. Easter also is a part of a time of spring, gives us hope in our faith belief. So when you as a family will think of the time when Terry died in years to come, you will always associate cherry blossoms and the Easter season. For in those two images from now on, it will bring you back to that time, the experience of this great loss for all of you. This time of year will never be the same for you anymore, but that's okay. For I hope that in the time of Easter, which will always be in and around these days, we give you an understanding that even through, that even though your husband, your father, your father-in-law, your grandfather, your brother, your neighbor or colleague who has died, there is resurrection. And that is what we believe as Christians. Terry, born in Knockbride 77 years ago, was married 48 years ago in St. Anne's in Bailborough. And this union gave them two sons, Wayne and Gary. And in the 70s, he worked with McIntyre's and eventually set up his own business, Terry's Carpets in Monaghan Town, which still is in existence at this time. I'm told that his work was his hobby and his hobby was his work. And if you say that you enjoy work, then you never feel you've ever walked a day at all. I think that probably was true for Terry. He had a massive love and interest in his grandchildren, and they loved him in return. They appreciated his presence and, for, and were the better for that. He loved to play darts with people he knew the best, especially his own children. And that lets us know that he had to have a good eye and was able to calculate complex numbers if you were to be a good dart player. I couldn't help but notice that last Sunday we celebrated the funeral mass of Jimmy Fay, a painter who made the houses of people a home from his painting expertise. And now this Sunday, one week on, we come to St. Patrick's Church here in Carrie Callan to remember Terry Sexton, who likewise was a man through his carpet business, was also able to make a house a home for the people who employed him. I think there's a possibility that these two men may meet up together as they worked together in various projects. And I think they will meet now in the heavenly realm. And I'm sure that when they are up there, there might be a little job to be done in some place up there that needs improving. It might be a paint job or a carpet job or both combined together. And I'm sure between the two of them, that says, sure, we give them a quote and see how far we get. This fact helps us know that in the middle of loss and sadness, there is purpose, even if it is hard to take in. The last time I had the privilege of seeing Terry was on Wednesday last in the hospital. It was a peaceful, calm room where we reflected on his life and we have reflected on the faith as well in the prayer and blessing that I give him. And I could realize in that room on that day a sense of sadness, uh, trying to understand the leaving of someone they loved and cared for, but also maybe understanding too that this was his time now. I know that the staff in the hospital, especially Dr. Wilhelm and the palliative care team, give him the dignity and respect that he deserved at the end of life. I know for you as a family, this is important and hopefully will help you as you reflect on this loss in a time to come. The ability for the family to choose the readings and the prayers for our Mass is important, for it is in those pieces of scripture that they have picked, that they're able to tell us what kind of a person he was, how much they loved him, and how much 
this loss is so great in their lives. But also indicating too that faith is the cornerstone of his life. A faith like for most of us was private, but still necessary in the time of the death of Terry. Likewise, the account of the journey of the disciples on the way to Emmaus, the Father Andrew just read for us, when they met the stranger. They told him of the going on of Jerusalem when Jesus had died and rose from the dead. Little did they know that it was Jesus who was with them all the time. They only saw him for a moment, and he was gone. I think this gospel passage is important because it helps us understand in many of the appearances of Jesus after his resurrection that sometimes it's not as clearly obvious to see him. He's not that visible at times. I'm sure for you as a family, there were times you were maybe not aware that Christ was in the experience. Maybe for moments in that experience, you may have felt that you were abandoned during Terry's illness. That is understandable. But maybe his presence was in the people who cared for him, who supported you during this illness. Maybe he is present in the people that you have linked up to over the last couple of days. Christ, I believe, is in the stories that you have heard of Terry in the people who shook your hand over these days. And I know that he is in the people that are here present in this church on this spring day in the hills of Carrie Callan. So, as we prepare to make the final journey to the graveyard, our prayer as a parish for you as a family is that Christ on the road of Amos will walk with you not only in this moment in time, but in the days and weeks that lie ahead. I always try to talk especially to the grandchildren. And I know that your loss is intense and great. But I want you to take some evident knowledge of who Terry was in his life for you. Take his charisms, his goodness, his standards of life and use them as a yardstick for you as you grow up. In this time of Easter, we reflect obviously on the resurrection. In this church, we are aware of the image in front of us of the Easter garden. The tomb is empty. There's just the clock. But there is a sense of hope. That links to the paschal candle that is lit at his coffin. That candle gives us a sense of the light of Christ, a light that is used in darkness. And that light burns brightly for you. And the light of his memory, of who he was for you as a family, will never be quenched. It will always live on in your hearts and in your minds forever. And so in that reality, we move forward. Reality of acceptance of loss, but also the reality that he made a difference, not only to you as a family, but to each and every one of the people that he encountered over the years. And so we ask the Lord to walk with you again at this time. And as you walk to his final place of rest in a little while, may you be able to use a memory that you have of him, Bring that memory with you as a prayer of thanksgiving. And as you do so, know that the community here present will walk with you in solidarity in your loss. We as a community offer you our sympathy and prayers. And we know that his gentle soul will rest in peace. Amen.
So I invite you to stand at this time and invite uh, those who are offering up prayers to the faithful to share with them now at this time. His commitment to friends and his support for those in need set an example for us all. Grant us the grace to follow in his ways and make the world a better place. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Gaga lived for his family. They meant the world to him. He loved and cared for them with every essence of his being. We ask for a special blessing and strength for Breach, Wayne, Gary, and to all who loved and will miss Gaga to help them through these dark days. Lord, hear us. Blessed are we who are saddened by the loss of one whom we have loved. May our hope in the resurrection and the promise of eternal life bring us comfort and turn our sadness into joy. Lord, hear us. Terry touched the lives of all of us. Help us to keep alive in our lives the values and the ideals he put before us. Lord, hear us. We pray for our departed brothers and sisters. Today we pray for Terry's parents and the deceased members of the Sexton and McCarran families. May Terry be reunited with them in God's kingdom where there is no more pain or suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray in silence for our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your children who cry out to you in their need. Bind up what is broken, heal what is wounded, hold the weak and the suffering close to your heart so that they may taste the bounty of your love. We make these in all our prayers now through Christ our Lord. Please be seated now again. We have shared the word of God and we have listened and reflected and offered up our prayers of petition and now I invite uh, Helen and Hamla uh, to bring up the gifts of bread and wine that we change into the body and blood of Christ. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray, your servant Terry, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of consolation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may be by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away. We ask this now through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift 
of your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We pause, we thank the Lord for the blessings that he showed on all of us at this time. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory and with him called back into life. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, our Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the work of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And never cease to gather people to yourselves, that from the rising of the sun to the setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit of grace, to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us now the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and given you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks, said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Savior of the world, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. But we pray upon the oblation of your church to recognize your sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Phelan, St. Bridget, St. Oliver Plunkett, and with all the saints in his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, to your servant Francis, our Pope, and Martin Hayes, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious, the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, God, to yourself, all your children, scattered throughout the world. Remember especially our emigrants and missionaries at this time. 
Remember your servant, Terry Sexton, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united to the Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth you will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you without passing from this life, remember especially Terry's parents, James and Ellen, and all the deceased of the Sexton and Karen and Smith families. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we should be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honour is yours now, forever and ever. So we stand together. United in our Christian faith, we say as one, our Father. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day. That by the help of your mercy always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as wait in blessed hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign now forever and ever. Peace to the Lord be with you always. Pray in silence for peace in our world and peace in our hearts. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We await a Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to confirm with his glorious body.
Just before the final prayer and blessing and commendation, just to thank you for your presence here uh, this afternoon, for Terry and I know for his family, they greatly appreciate you spending time with them this afternoon. Uh, thanks to all who are involved in our liturgy and the readings, prayers, the faith and the gifts, and to uh, Damien, uh, our musician, and uh, a nephew from Kerry who plays uh, on the flute there. Uh, it greatly enhances our liturgy at this time uh, to our undertakers, uh, uh, Pete and Fidelma, and uh, also our sacristans and our uh, car park attendants as well outside and all who make sure that this gathering uh, is done with reverence and respect. And we appreciate uh, all of that effort at this time. Um, when the prayers are complete, uh, will please be guided by the undertakers who will uh, help you uh, to sympathise uh, with the, the family uh, in an appropriate manner. So we have the final prayer at this time. So I invite you to kneel, please. <coughs> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Terry, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. We ask this now through Christ our Lord. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
though the prayer accommodation is on your leaflet. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave now of our brother Terry. Our farewell expresses our, expresses our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we should joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Father Andrew now will sprinkle holy water on his coffin, reminding us of his baptism, and then we'll reverence him with incense at this time. In silence we pray. Saints of God, come to his aid, come to meet him, angels of the Lord, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ to call you, take you to himself, may angels lead you to Abraham's side, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant to him, O Lord, and perpetual light shed upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend now our brother Terry, and assure in certain hope that together with who all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Terry in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us, listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you now and our brother forever and ever. Amen. Just be seated for a moment, please. And invite... Uh, Alicia and Chloe to lead us in reflection before the sympathizing begins. His life was one of kindly deeds, a helping hand for others' needs. Always patient, always kind, so many memories left behind. What he suffered, he told but few. He didn't deserve what he went through. God saw him getting tired, and when a cure was not to be, he put his arms around him and whispered, Come to me. A prayer from those who loved you, a memory fond and true. In our hearts, you'll live forever, because we thought the world of you. So at this time now the undertakers will arrange you uh, for the sympathising at this time and then we will make our way to the graveyard.
I know your lights on earth of trouble. Only you could know the pain. You were afraid to face the devil. <laughs> you were no stranger to the rain. <laughs>
Thank you. 